Hello, everyone. Welcome to Space Bay. Hey, hey. Space Bay. <laughs> we're glad to have you with us, and we're happy to see you or know that you're watching. Uh, my name is Ryan Dancing. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at AEG, and I will be your host for today. I'd like to introduce the other folks on the stream. Uh, running tech and handling all the clever on-screen UI is Vladimir Orlyana. Hi, everyone. Vladimir's in lockdown today. Guatemala went into hard lockdown yesterday. So hard lockdown. He's living in his house. Yeah. Uh, we've also, of course, got Mark Wooten. Hey. Nice uh, Star Wars background. That's nice. Oof. It's very aspirational. <laughs> and the Peterson notes, Luke and Rose. <laughs> Woo! Hey. Yay. My wife, Delena, is going to play along today. She's not on camera, but she's just going to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vlad, do you want to do some shout outs to the people that have joined us? Yes, thank you, David, Allison, Alex, Ty. Thank you for being here, guys. Thank you for being in all uh, and to all the other people on all the other social channels. And Sarah, thank you for joining us and get ready to play Space Base. Space Base. All right, uh, just want to remind everyone please share, retweet, smoke signal, whatever you do on your social platform to get the word out. Uh, we want to make sure that we've got as big an audience as we can. And the bigger the audience gets, the cooler the promotions we'll be able to do are. We will be giving something away today. And I'll have to be thinking about that as we play and figure that out. I got all my notes ready today. And I didn't get that one ready. So we'll figure that out. All right. I'm going to read the script, which is going to explain how to play Space Base. Um, everyone, suit up. It's time to play John Declare's game of dice rolling and engine building. You'll need to have your own copy of Space Base to play along. To set up your game, assemble your space base player board as per the rules. Place the 12 starting ships on their respective sectors and place your credits tracker at six and your income and victory point tracker cubes at zero. Next, deploy the market. I'm gonna switch to my camera here so everybody can see what we're doing on screen. And I'd love to keep that space background there, but. It just doesn't look right. Um, all right, so uh, you're gonna set your market up like I have here. You're gonna shuffle the level one, the level two, and the level three stacks. And then you're gonna deal out four ships from each. So you'll have four level one, four level two, and four level three ships for a total of 12 ships on the market. Then you're gonna draw a level one ship for each player. Uh, that ship gets deployed to your space base in the associated sector. I drew a sector four. Um, so you're going to take the starting ship in that sector. You're going to flip it upside down. You're going to slide it under your board. So the red ability is showing. And then you're going to reduce your credits by the amount of the level one ship that you just deployed. So my level one ship costs two. I started at six. So I'm going to begin the game at four credits. All right. Uh, you also want to assemble the outposts as per the rules. Those are the cards with the yellow backs and the little victory point spaceship counters. Just keep them nearby. You'll be buying them later on in the game. Get your dice warmed up and make sure they're ready for a good day's work. Today, we're going to be playing with a special game mode that was designed by Luke Peterschmidt. In this game, our Dice-O-Matic AI will play as player one and player three. Everyone on the live stream and all of you playing at home will all be player two. We're gonna use this board to track which player's turn is ongoing and what the die rolls are for player one and player three. And Vlad has an amazing UI that's gonna go on the screen as well to help everybody see the dice and keep track of all this stuff. On the player one and player three turns, we'll use the red abilities on any ships we've deployed under our player boards and any green abilities that you may have. When it is player two's turn, we will roll our own dice. We'll use the blue and green abilities on the ships we've deployed to the player boards, but haven't flipped and slipped under the boards. After you've rolled and resolved your ship's abilities, you can go shopping on the market for a new ship. I've got our market set up just so people can see what it looks like. You're gonna have your own market. You're not gonna have to follow along with our, with our card selection. This is purely for illustrative purposes. If you're playing with more than one person in your local game, like my wife and I are, Keep track of who bought first each turn and rotate it so that the next player has a chance to buy first as we play through the turns. We'll give everyone a few minutes to resolve their turns before we continue to player three's roll. After, players three, after player three is rolled, 
We're also going to roll a die to determine which roll of the which row of the market is going to lose a card. We're going to roll two dice actually. Uh, when we roll a one, a two, or a three, we'll remove the level one ship that is farthest from the draw deck. When we roll a four or five, we'll remove the level two ship that is furthest from the draw deck. And when we roll a six, we'll remove the level three ship that is furthest from the draw deck. After we've removed a ship, we'll slide the remaining ships down and draw a new card for the corresponding deck to replace it. This system keeps the market from becoming stale, but it means you have to keep an eye on that ship you really want so you can buy it before it rolls off the end of the market and vanishes forever. We're gonna, we're gonna play 11 turns with this system. And after the 11th turn, we're gonna flip our tracking board over and reveal how the end game works, which we'll explain at that time. Unlike a normal space-based game, you don't end the game by getting to 40 victory points. We've got a special system that determines how the game ends and we'll discuss it after the 11th turn. Now we're ready to begin. I have turned on the subspace communicator to the Dysomatic AI and we are going to begin rolling for player one. Okay, everybody, let's play space, space. space. <laughs> All right, here is the roll for the robot on player one. He rolled a two and a four, two and a four for a total of six. So if your ship that you flipped when you got your level one ship to start the game was a two, a four, or a six, you'll be able to use that red ability. If you didn't get a two, a four, or a six, you can't do anything right now. I got a four, so I'm in good shape. Delaney got a six, so she's in good shape. Okay. All right. And now it's time for player two. So everybody at home is going to roll dice for yourself, and you're going to use the blue uh, abilities on your board. Ooh, I wrote seven. Uh, and then you're going to go shopping on the market, on your local market. Do you want to go first? All right. Delaney's going to buy first. Oh, oh, she's getting, she's getting, Delaney went for the card with arrows. Arrows are very strong. So uh, I'm going to mention that we currently have uh, our example uh, board set up with the base, space base cards. We are not using the Shy Pluto game here at the Dancy household, uh, although I believe the Peter Smiths are beginning Shy Pluto. If yeah. you have the Emergence of Shy Pluto expansion, you can certainly use it as you play along. We're just not showing any of the components on camera because we don't want to spoil anything for anybody who might not have all that stuff. Hey, uh, Ryan, I have a rules question on this card. Yes. Okay, so if this number gets rolled, I will get a cube anywhere I want, or do I have to spend the cubes up top to get a cube anywhere I want? You have to spend the cube up top. Anytime you see an ability with a little dot in the upper left-hand corner, that means that that is an ability that is paid for by the charge cubes that are on that card. And okay. I believe in that particular card, are those two charge cubes linked? Is there yes. a little link symbol in between them? Yes. So you need to get both of those charged in a two in a in a game with uh with two or three players, which this is. Okay, awesome. That's why you need so you're to gonna know. charge that up. Uh, okay, so uh, we are not playing with Shy Pluto today, but but the Dancy household has shuffled the Dreadnought promo pack cards into our level two market. Ooh. You can buy the space based Dreadnought promo cards on the Alderac online store, alderacstore.com. They're available for ten dollars plus shipping and handling. They are all level two ships, and a lot of them have hard way effects. A hard way is when you roll the same number on both dice. So they're real fun. Uh, all right, you shopped, I shopped, we replaced the market. We're done with player two, and now we're going to roll for player three. Ryan, oh, I actually, have a question. Uh, uh, yes. Someone in the chat is saying that you shouldn't move the market first to the left before <laughs> refilling the market. Yes. Sorry, one more time. I didn't quite understand yes. the question. Sure. The question is, shouldn't the, shouldn't the market move to the left before filling it back up? Yes. Yes, it should. Yes. There so, you go. So yeah, I, thank you for the uh, for pointing that out. Yep. Yeah. Yep, it should. After you purchase a card, you move everything to the right, and the new card takes the, the, the its place closest to the deck that it's just Yeah, that's right. That, that gives you the longest chance for it to stay. Uh, visible. I just screwed up way there. So I'm actually going to pass. I, I had a couple of really good rolls to start with. I've got eight credits, and I'm just going to let it roll and see if I can get into level three really soon. That may be a risky strategy. We'll see. All right. I'm going to roll for player three. And I rolled a two and a six. Two and a six. So if you've got a two, a six, or an eight flipped over on the red side, you are good to go. Eight was my starting card, so I'm pleased with that, Ryan. Oh, very nice. And now I'm going to roll to figure out what we do to the market. I rolled a three and a four. So we're going to remove the 
number one card that is farthest from the deck, slide those cards down, replace it. And we're going to remove a level two card that's farthest from the deck. We're going to slide those cards down, and we're going to replace it. And again, uh, I, we're just showing you our local market just so you can see how it works. You don't have to have the same cards. Uh, you should have your own market there at home. Mm. All right, we're going to go on to turn two. And the robot will roll for player one. The robot has rolled a three and a four. Hey. Three and a four, total of seven. Got a simple point off robot here. All right, I got that four. That gives you another space buck. All right, and now it's time for player two. So everybody's going to roll for yourself. Roll for yourself. Oh, a two and a four or a six. Okay, I'm going to take two more space bucks. All right, now I'm shopping first this turn. Am I into the third row? I am not. <laughs> and, Jay's, and Jay, you're saying, I guess Ryan is human after all. Uh, that is for sure true. I am going to pass again. I'm making a huge risky risky move. All right, Delana shop. So we'll slide these down. We'll replace this one. Yeah, I'm, okay. hanging on for a card. I'm hanging on for a card in row two, Ryan. So be, be kind with the cards that go off the end, please. Right. All right, I'm uh, rolling for player three. Player three's roll is a one and a three. Oh, nice. A one and a three, total of four. Oh, I got another dollar. I got the money now. Don't be bad. Don't be bad. All right, and we're going to adjust the market, and our market adjustment is a three and a five. So we're going to lose a number one, and we're going to lose a number two. Oh, I didn't want the number two to go, really. All right. We, um, we're, I'm happy to announce that we just got new space space inventory in the warehouse this week so you'll be able to buy space space from our online store shortly it may already actually be turned back on and we are shipping orders out to our wholesalers and uh your local retail store should have space space available many of you will have a store that does curbside pickup and we really encourage you to help support those stores uh during this time of weirdness they can certainly use all the all the sales they can get and if you don't have one we have it on our online store that's right. All right. So we're going to go to turn number three. And player number one is going to roll. All right. And it is a four and a six, total of 10. Four to six, total of 10. Ooh, high numbers. All right. And then you're going to roll for yourself. <laughs> so, what's your strategy for today, Mark? Um, well, there's a really nice number six in. Um, All right. You're shopping first. There's a really nice number six in my, my second. Uh, uh, second level cards and i have a number six revealed in my in my ones uh, after the first turn so that's why i hung on because my number six is going to disappear at the end so i'm going to buy that right now um it's it gives me victory points i think early victory points is important in this format um and number six is also the best number on the board in terms of probability All right, so I have succeeded in accumulating a bunch of space bucks. I've got 15, which means I am into level three. I'm actually going to toss this card. So <laughs> the only card that we recommend you don't play with is the card that actually is in our tableau. It is uh, the UES Gordon, which is the card which uh, causes all other opponents to lose four victory points. Um, since it's likely that you're playing at home by yourself, there won't be any uh, players to lose victory points for. So we recommend you just take that card out of the stack and don't play with it. And now I'm tossing cards all over the board. That's really great. All right. This is, this is the part where I convince my wife I'm not manipulating the deck for my own personal benefit. All right, so um, what are we getting going on? Here? You can that by just losing to her every game, right? All right, so I am going to take a very expensive card for the number 10 slot, which kind of commit, commits me to a strategy of trying to manipulate the dice or get arrows. We'll see how that works out. All right, uh, it is now time for player three. You bought, right? Yeah, it's player three, and player three rolled a one and a six, total oh, of seven. Six, six one and a six, total of seven. So, Mark, well, I have a question time. from Thomas for you. Yes. And the question is, do you know who shot first? <laughs> I, 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 I do, but I can't say. Ah, okay. No droids. All right. Uh, <laughs> we're going to adjust the market. 
Uh, the market adjustment is a three and a four. We're going to lose a number one ship, and we're going to lose a number four ship. Sorry, uh, a level two ship and a level one ship. All right. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. All right. Okay. Uh, we are now on turn number four, and we're getting ready to roll for player one. And, and the, four, I roll for, the one four, is a three and a four, goal. total of seven. There we go. Wow, where's where's John Zinzer and John Claire this week? Last week, you know, they're screaming for sevens and they couldn't get any. And then after you've resolved the three and the four, roll for yourself. Player two. That would be you. Rolls. Five. All right. I'm gonna take two credits. Uh, this is an even number turn. So I shop first in our local game. I have three <laughs> credits. I'm going to take this bad boy. The first time I saw this number two sector card that costs two credits and is exactly the same as your starting card, I could not figure out what the point was. And then I realized that the point is that you get to flip that card over and play on other people's turns. Suddenly, it shockingly made sense to me. It's almost like John Claire knew what he was doing. Yeah. Okay, uh, you shopped? Okay, uh, so these are going to slide down. Okay, number six is getting locked and loaded. Oh, here. Arrows. Oh, lots of arrows. Okay. All right. Uh, we are now going to roll for player three. Uh, player three, roll a two and a five. Total seven. Two and five. That's Look terrible. At that. missed everything. That was, that was an okay roll. Sevens. That was awful. It was terrible. Seven, seven, seven. Look, what was the most difficult part of uh, creating the solo mode for Space Base? You know, I think it was trying to make it so it felt like you were playing against somebody else. And that things that you would want would go away, uh, yeah, that was that was challenging. But you know what? It, it it's a pretty easy game to. John did such a good job of this game that it wasn't that hard to to make it work. I think, and I love it. I love playing this way. I think it's super fun. All right, I'm going to roll to adjust the market. I think it's fun too. We've uh, we've actually done it a couple of times with friends and family. We're going to lose a row number one card and a row number two card. All right. So everyone in the chat, please let us know what do you think of the solo version of a Space Race. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did we make the did we make the, the the template available for download? Is it? Did we do yes. that yet? Yes. If you want to do this with your friends and family who own games, you can download that little chart Ryan has, uh, and the rules. Is it on the Space Base page on Aldrac.com? I'm not sure right now, but I, I I guess it's on the plan to be there. Okay, we'll figure that out. Uh, all right, I have adjusted the market and I have moved the turn counter to number five and it is time to roll for player one. Player one rolled a one and a two. A one and a two. Uh, a one and a two. And after you do the one and the two, you're going to roll for yourself. Player two is going to roll. Oh, I almost got my number. Oh, so close. So close. Good. I'm going to buy another six. All right. All right. It is the odd number, so Delane is going to shop first in our local market. I have three cards up on six now. Come on. Three cards up on six. All right. She's taken a money card. All right. I am going to take the sector eleven card with arrows. I need to. I need to work on my strategy of getting more tens. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. We've mentioned before, players, that uh, this game accelerates very quickly. So it may feel like things are moving slowly, even though we're halfway down the chart. But I promise you, by the time we get down to turn 9, 10, and 11, they'll be going fast, and you'll have a lot of stuff going on. Alison was just saying that. She's saying that she feels like this version goes so fast, and it's hard to will and get the points. But that's also just down the rolling, because I always pick the wrong numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you and yeah, me both. Yeah. <laughs> We, we are definitely collecting some data as we're playing these games, and, and we may make a few tweaks. Uh, one of the things we're discussing is adding one more round and playing to 12 before we go to the end game. Um, but, you know, even though it has ended kind of abruptly the last two weeks, we've had players over 40 points when it ended. So yeah. in, a, in a normal space-based game, it would have been over anyway. All right, I'm going to roll for player three. The Dysomatic has rolled the big number, Ooh. 12. Oh, oh yes. Yes. you're killing me. Wow. <laughs> oh, look at that face on Mark. He's all Mark red like the, and Mike excited. Mark like Do you have right. something on your 12 or it's your six-space double? 
I got three cards up on six. Oh, oh. that's no good. Now it, it's listen. It's not the greatest. I got two credits and a victory point per six rolled, but still, double six is my best. That's nice. Right. <laughs> pretty good. All right. Players, well, if you uh, if you bet at the craps table, the odds of rolling two sixes are thirty six to one, but the casino pays thirty to one, which is why the casino always wins. All right, and then we're going to adjust the market. I rolled uh, I rolled eight the hard way. We're going to take two level twos off the board. So you mean that do dollar midnight isn't the best bet on the table? <laughs> Everybody knows that the dollar midnight is the best bet on a craps table. Uh, for some definitions of best. Uh, oh, look, I got a, uh, I've got a card from the promo pack up. I've got a, a number five with two arrows and a bunch of wacky abilities. Okay, uh, we are going to move the round counter down to number six, round counter to six, and the Dysomatic AI is going to roll for player one. I need to get one of those boggle pop o -matic things so we can have a have an actual robot do this. I rolled a one and a two again. Wow. <sighs> one and a two again. Well, at least I scored on three. I'm consistent. I may be bad, but I'm consistent. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then we're going to roll for ourselves. Player two's turn. Everyone roll for yourself. Uh, two, two threes. Threes. I gotta say, I'm finding it much easier to run the game on Space Base and play than I than I am trying to run the Tiny Towns game and play. Yeah. Wow, that is a brain burner. Yeah, especially now know. that we're playing with villagers' buildings. Villagers' oh, buildings are a little bit more complex. And really take a sum from you too. I'm holding on for level three. Holding on. At for least level nobody three. wanted to do trivia this week because that would have probably just exploded <laughs> my head. Trivia. I still yeah. remember right, that gonna... day when John did the trivia <laughs> with the house the pieces. Building thing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ah. All right. I'm gonna roll for player three, and uh, player three rolled a four and a five, total of nine. Four and five, oh. total of nine. Serious? Ah. Player three is player three has been really bad for me. Yeah. Oh, is 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 is, is nine is nine the Peter Schmidt number there? You're both looking happy. I got happy. I got something for the first time on someone else's <laughs> role. For the second time. <laughs> Ryan, I have a strategy you're... mark. You'll love my strategy mark. It's all odd numbers. You're a pro. Oh. <laughs> Ryan, uh, someone in the chat is asking if you can show them the promo card. Close. The pro, sure, absolutely. Um, okay, so I'm going to hold this up so you can see it a little bit better. Let me rotate this. This is a promo card from the Dreadnought pack. You can tell it's a promo card because right here, there's a little tiny lightning bolt um, in the space that we use to uh, identify which cards are not in the basic set. Um, most of the cards in the Dreadnought promo pack, or many of the cards in the Dreadnought promo pack, are driven by hard ways, where you roll the same number on both dice. This one is not. Um, it's just a it's just a promo card. Um, it's got a charge to uh, get three money and buy a card. Interesting. Oh, it's interesting. So this is particularly interesting because this is a, wow, this is an ability that you charge when it is somebody else's turn, but it is a blue ability, which means you do it on your turn. Yeah. That's pretty complicated. Um, okay. Uh, where are we at? We are rolling to change the market. market. All right, I rolled a one and a three, so we're going to lose two of the level one market cards. Oosh. I feel like we should set up a board with the cards that get rolled off. Like, <laughs> you know, like that should be the robot's board. We can and if the it. robot wins, we, we all lose. It would be embarrassing if the robot just kept beating us. That's right. Well, it does get two cards a turn, which is better than what we're doing. All right, we're going to go to turn number seven, and we're going to roll for player one. Uh, the player one robot has rolled a one and a six, another seven. Yeah. Another Luke, seven. I'm going to give you a task. Uh-oh. Okay. We are going to do a giveaway today to give a promo pack to one of the viewers. Maybe even Excellent. two promo packs. So I, I like will ask you to figure out two really good questions of yes. space sci-fi that we can ask them at the end of the show. Is that oh. okay? Okay, two right. sci-fi questions. Luke is now the quiz master. Very good. I like it. Good boy. Okay. All right. We're going to roll for player two. Everybody roll at home. Roll for yourself. 
All right. I got a good number. All right. This is an odd numbered uh, turn. So Delana will be buying first in our local market. This is interesting. All right. Delana's going to take the thing that looks interesting to her. Okay. These will slide down. New car will come off. Oh, perfect timing. I will take that. Thank you very much. Do I? I've got, I've got two more sixes. They're both level three cards. I can afford one of them, but I wanted to put the other one up first before I started trying to get that one, but I'm worried I'm going to lose them. I like your power six strategy. That's um, yeah, it's super just, clever. It's, just the way it's come out, but yeah, I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna buy another six here, so I now have four cards up on six. All right, then we're gonna roll for player three. Player three rolled a three and a four. It's all about the sevens today. It's a good thing I am not the shooter. I would be maybe playing the don't right now, the dark side. One of the one of the hidden secrets of craps is you can, if you want, play against the house, play against the players and with the house. It's called playing the don't. All right, I'm going to roll for the market adjustment. I rolled a one and a four. Of course, the other secret is even if you play for the house, the odds are still against you. Oh, we became all silent. What happened? Well, there's so much thinking going on. The brain. <laughs> I can hear the squirrels running around. Or we've lost his audio. Uh, I think we might have lost Ryan Alio. Let me double check. Okay, well, we rolled for ourselves as bot. Did we roll for player three? Because I see his dice. Uh, I don't know. Let me Let me try to get Ryan. So... I think that Ryan rolled for player one. Player he rolled, one. He rolled a six and a one. Now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, another six and a one for player that was one. Weird. I, rolled a, I rolled a six and a one for player one. Yep. And then we should be All rolling right. for ourselves now. And you should be rolling for yourselves, yeah. I don't know what just happened to my audio. That's weird. All right. Uh, All right. I am, uh, I am going. Oh, we're on turn eight. I'm going first this turn. I rolled a six. Good. Sorry about that, guys. We are back. So this is where. Oh, that was odd. That was awesome. That was awesome. That's it's never good when Delana says that's awesome. That means I'm losing. <laughs> I have to use that cool promo card. She's using a promo card. All right. I am going to skip a turn. I'm going to pass. Are you shopping? All right, shopping locally. Shopping locally. All right. Well, Delana's getting ready to buy. I was about to mention before my microphone mysteriously died that AEG is running a promotion right now on Guildhall. Guildhall is a game that originally came out as kind of a Euro-themed game, and we reskinned it and made it into a fantasy game. And you can get the complete Guildhall line right now on our online store at alldrackstore.com. That is the three uh, first Guildhall releases and the Guildhall The Gathering. And it comes in a storage box called the Box of Holding. And I believe the price on that is 59 bucks. Yep. Yeah, yeah. it's 59.99, is it? Yeah. With free shipping. This With is a game shipping. that uh, that the Dice Tower absolutely loved. And uh, yeah, you should pick it up. Great right shipping. Free shipping in the US, right? Free shipping, free shipping in, the US, in the US. And this yeah. is four releases of the game. So, yes, so no free shipping for me? Oh. No, not in Guatemala. <laughs> um, we, well, uh, we're all still we in love, lockdown. <laughs> we love the designer of this game, and we have a long-term relationship with him, and he has asked to have that game right, rights back because we're not uh, currently making any new Guildhall product. So the rights are going to revert to him, which means that this will be the last time you'll be able to buy AEG's Guildhall. When, uh, when this sale is over, that product is going to go away forever. So if you want to get Guildhall from us, you should get it now. Yeah. Keep your busy. Uh, Keep all right. Busy. That was the player two roll. So it's time for player three. Come on. Let's get some sixes. I rolled a four and a, a three again. Another seven. Cool. That's been paying off. Wow. Another seven. Apparently, these orange dice just have one number in them. 
Well, at least it was at least it wasn't five and two. Five and two misses me completely. All right, and then uh, for the market adjustment, I rolled a two and a four, so we're going to lose it a level one card and a level two card. I'm oh. just hoping that Rose is playing the seven strategy. I see yeah. we're all quiet, and then this is going to go. I'm, uh, so you know right. what? Now it's a really good time to let me know how many points each of you yes. have. I was just going to say that. Let's do a victory point check. I have zero. Six. Delana has six. Peter Schmitz. Six. Five. Mark. Three. All right. Any scores from the folks playing at home, Vlad? Oh, let me ask them. All right. Okay, we're going to roll for player one. Player one at the start of turn number nine. Player one rolled a two and a four. Oh. Two and four, a six. There, you got your magic number, Mark. Got the magic number. <laughs> And, and then roll for yourself uh, for player two. Best number on the board. Oh, I got it. Oh, double. I got the 10. That is terrible. I get to gain two little two parts. That's gain, folks, not buy. I just get them. So, okay. Susie has zero. Amy has four. Allison has four. And her husband has seven. Thomas has six. Jay has three. Fiona has three. Anthony and David have. Oh, sorry. Anthony has one. David Bauer has four. And um, that's the current scores. All right. I am taking the mysterious 2x card. Dang it, I wanted that one. I know you did. This is one of the weirdest cards in the game. Sorry, the glare is really bad. Uh, this is one of the weirdest cards in the game, and people often have a lot of questions. There's like a whole page about this in the rule book explaining it. What it basically <laughs> means is that um, you roll it the first time and put a charge on it. And then it's a blue charge ability, which means on your turn, you can spend that charge on any roll of the dice to double the reward that you got. Wow. So it is a it is a way to kickstart your game when you are trailing, which I currently am since I have zero victory points. All right. Uh, that was the roll for everybody. So now we're going to roll for player three. Player three rolled another six, a two and a four. Sweet. Mark, two you're killing six. it. That's Just crazy. for Mark. <laughs> All right. I have to pivot this game and figure out how to get victory points. There is, There are only victory points in the third level in our game. This is not a good situation. All right. Uh, I'm going to adjust the market. I rolled a five and a six. So we're going to lose a level two card and a level three card. Speaking of the cards of victory points, we just lost one. That's awesome. Ah, man, I am making a total hash out of our, Ooh, out of our deck here. Okay. Cups. All right. Wow. I need to get those victory points. Or I need to start buying outposts. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to go to turn number 10. And we will be rolling for player one. Player one rolls a two and a five. <laughs> oh, man. A seven. That's but the a third seven. seven on a row for player one. I know. It's There's been a lot of seven. You would expect to get a lot of sevens. That is the most common roll in 2D6. Yeah. It's not the most common number in this game. Yeah, usually it's not the most common in this game. Well, no, it, it isn't. It isn't the most frequently. It's it, it's because you can take the two dice separately, the probability right, right. Yeah. of the numbers goes 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is true. Yeah, if you have your copy of a space base with you, John DeClaire did a great job putting that probability pyramid on the back of the rule book. And it's really interesting. Right. He's a major in economics and he does all this work. All right, uh, you're going to roll for yourself now. Re roll for player two. Player two is you. Oh, six and a three. That couldn't be any better. Takes me to 16 money. And I'm going to buy another six card. Alison is saying that she has nine income now because of the sevens. Wow. Nine income. Crush it. Holy smokes. Um, I, I, I'm going to just pass because I need to buy victory points. <laughs> I, I get six money in a victory point now every time a six is rolled. There's not on my turn. This is going to be an embarrassing game if I don't even get a single victory point before this thing ends. All right. Uh, now we're going to roll for player three. Come on, uh, player ahead. three rolled a two and a four. There's another six, Mark. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, what did you get? 
two and a four. Six million of extra point. Oh. Okay, now we're cooking. All right, I'm going to call I'm glass for this one. Glass, everybody. No, no, sorry. This <laughs> flashbacks to a game I play better than this one. All right, uh, now we're going to uh, roll to upgrade the market. I rolled a three and a six. So we're going to lose a number one ship, and we're going to lose a number three ship. One, two, three. Oh my gosh, the victory point cards just keep getting closer to the cliff here. Ooh, we're reaching turn 11. Wow. All right. We are going to turn 11. This is the last of the regular turns. When this turn is over, we're going to explain how the end game system works. And we will roll for player one. Player one's roll is a one and a six, total of seven. Yes. I'm going to get every different important. seven possible in this game. It's the six that's important, Ryan. That's that 12 money for me. For me in way. <laughs> okay. Uh, then when you're done with the one and the six, roll for yourself. Oh, I got it again. I rolled an 11, but I have arrows. I'm back to claiming two cards. Oh, boy. If only these cards were cards that scored victory points, I would be a lot happier. Well, I'm buying another six. Oh, All right, well, I'm going to get a seven. If I'm going to roll every seven in the game, I better get the seven. <laughs> and then I think we're going to go with a... I'm going to get another seven. I'm taking two sevens. Yeah. I'm going to flood the seven. six cards up on the six sector now. Okay. Oh my All God. about six for Mark. All about six for Mark. I, I, and I have two other cards up total. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Now it is time to shop. It is an odd number turn, so you get to go first. If you want to buy anything. All right. Delaney just bought an outpost. She's now into the end game. Yeah. All right. Before we before we start the end game, let's talk about scores. I have no score. Delaney, how many points do you have? Eleven. Delaney has eleven. Mark, how many points do you have? Seven. And the Peter Smiths. Nine. Five still. Nine and five. Okay. All right, now is the part where the game starts to get very interesting. I'm going to pull the dice off the board, flip Just the board over. Give me one second, Ryan, so I can do all the shift shifting. Okay, that's right. I know you have some some super awesome system there, so we'll let that happen. Let me know when you're ready, Vlad. Yeah, sure. And we're ready. All right, this is the end game, and here's how it works. Thanos snaps his fingers, but it turns out Tony Stark is Iron Man and all is well. No, that's, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> We're going to roll the dice just as we have been for player one and player three, and you will continue to roll for player two, and we will continue to manipulate the market after player three rolls. Every time the dice -matic AI rolls, when player one rolls and when player three rolls, we're going to mark their roll on this chart. And the game will continue until the Dysomatic AI rolls the same die combo again. So if I rolled a four and a one, I would mark the four and the one. And then if I rolled another four and one, the game will end. When the, when the game ends, uh, you will get one final turn. So we will play through to the player two turn. You will get one last turn after we have reached the end game condition. It usually takes four to five rounds to end the game. It could take a lot more. We had one game that went deep into extra innings. Uh, but it is possible the game could end in two turns. So we're going to roll now for player one. Uh, player one rolled a one and a four. One and a four. <laughs> one roll again. So I'm going to mark that. Wow, it's exactly what I use as my example. OK. Ah! I'm actually going to switch dice here just so the camera can see this a little bit better. Oh. I got nothing from that. There we go. All right. One and a four. Okay. So uh, one and a four. Did that help me at all? It did help me. Okay. All right. And now it's time for player two. So roll for yourself. Wow. I rolled it again. That's a little bit unusual. Um, okay. I am going to get two more gold. That gets me up to 12. And I am still not able to buy anything with victory points. Oh, I could buy this. Yep, buy that. All right. Finally, I have some victory points on the board. <laughs> what did you, roll? you rolled one and four on the first turn, right? I did. And then I rolled it again for myself, weirdly. 
Okay, so I can bump that one and four to make it a six. All right. Uh, Get myself organized here. Da, da, da. Okay. The board is now in total chaos, but that's all right. All right, here we go. All right. <laughs> okay. so what are you waiting for, Luke? Uh, I need victory points. <laughs> I'm on fives and tens, so. All right. Uh, I assume everybody is done shopping. And so we are going to roll the dice for player three. And player three rolled a three and a five. Three and a five. Good. Total of eight. That is an okay roll. It doesn't have a six in it. It's not okay. Some definitions are okay. And then we'll roll for the upgrade dice. I rolled a two and a three. So we're going to drop the two number one ships that are farthest from the deck and replace those. Oh, there's another victory point. All right, we are going to go back to the top and roll for player one again. Player one's roll is a three and a six. Six, six, winner. Three and a six. Nobody likes a winner. Uh, all right. Uh-oh. Inbound phone call. Uh, all right, three and a six. Well, that's actually, I think, the first nine I've rolled in the whole game, and it doesn't even do any good. Okay, uh, every roll for yourself. Roll for yourself. I rolled an 11. I get to take two more cards. Good. Ooh, nine. It's me to 18 money. It's time to start buying uh, victory points. I'm taking this one. And, and while we're doing that, Luke, do you have my first question? Uh, um, maybe, Rose, do you have a question? Uh, 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 oh, sure. Um, name a companion of the ninth doctor from Doctor Who. Oh, that's deep. I love it. <laughs> wow. That is excellent trivia. You mean there was a Doctor Who after Tom Baker? Oh, <laughs> Doctor Who trivia. Now we are deep in the nerd zone. Teeny Brendan. Teeny Brendan. Wait, do I get a bunch? Yep. Oh, I got a bunch too. All right, we're going to roll for player three. Here comes player three's roll. Player three rolled two fours. All right. And then fourth the hard way. And if you could pause for one second after that, right? That'd be great. Okay. I'm just, we're a little short on time here. Two fours. All right, we'll uh, we'll let the Peter Smiths catch up. Wait, what was that for us? Two fours. Okay. <laughs> Thomas says Rose. Amy said Rose. Susie says Rose. So uh, Thomas is the winner. That was a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Luke, is that is that an on purpose naming or is that purely coincidental? Uh, purely coincidental. Yeah, All right. Right. We All named right. our, daughter, our daughter after a character in a Larry Niven novel, so you know it could happen. Yeah. Right. I, I remember you being quite impressed when I knew that because you said you said my daughter's named Tila, and I said, "Is she lucky?" And you're like, "Oh, <laughs> that one!" I knew we would be friends. All right, uh, now I have to roll to adjust the market. Uh, the market adjustment is a five and a six, so we're going to lose a number two uh, ship and a number three ship. Can I count that number six in my scores as well? You cannot. <laughs> that would be just too much good. Please. Uh, Peter Smith, are you guys caught up? Are you good to go? Good. Yep, we're good. Thanks. All right. We are now going to roll for player one. The dice-o-matic roll for player one is... Come on, six. Come on, six. Come on, six. One and a four. One and a four. Oh, oh that happened already. Yes, it did. We are oh. in the end game. Seven money. Okay. And you know what the sad thing is? I've only got one charge on my charge counter that lets me bump that. So we can you tell us, Ryan, how this is going to work now that we yeah. reach the ending? We are going to, you're going to resolve the one and the four just like you would normally. And then there will be one final player two turn. You'll roll the dice for yourself. Take whatever actions you can, and that will be the end of the game. Uh, the problem is I can do nothing good on my own turn. It's all about all the turns. I rolled a nine. Not what I wanted. <laughs> really seriously crap. I rolled a 12. I getting, um, that's not really useful. I could get a five and a four, which is two space that space bucks. That gives me nine space bucks. And I can't buy an outpost because my wife has bought them all. I have no victory points. That wow. is the worst thing ah. I have ever played, ever. Ever. 
that last run through was bad for me. Yeah, I just want to point out that my my player board right now is in fantastic shape and it scored no points, Whoa. zero. Oh, complete goose egg. <laughs> I don't. I'm so humiliated. That may be my last game of Space Space ever. I don't know. Yeah, my, right. my board is weird. I literally have twice as many cards above the six as I have on the rest of my board total. Do we have a roll for player three or are we done? We're, We're done. done. Ooh. All right. Final scores are Ryan, nothing. Selena? 20. 20. Oh, Mark? no! Whoa. Mark? 19. 19. 19. <laughs> All right. Peter Schmidt? 17. And 20. Whoa! Wow, good right, job! All right. all right. And in the chat we have David with twenty, a Susie with twenty-one, and that's pretty oh. good because she was struggling the whole game. And then we have <laughs> Amy with nineteen, Fiona with thirty-four, and Allison also with thirty-four. Anthony with seven, Allison with twenty-five, Jay with thirty-six, and Thomas with nineteen. Thank you guys for playing today. Whoa, nice great scores. Well, we know all the people who were on sevens anyway. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, and they're all the ones who scored thirty something. Yeah. All right. I think I think I have a, a sci-fi question for those out there. Sure. Excellent. Uh, one of the uh, Star Trek TV series was uh, filmed in reverse order, meaning the first episode you saw was the last one the cast filmed. And the last one you saw in that season was the first one the cast filmed. Which TV series was uh, produced that way? Wow, that's interesting. Which TV series or which? Uh... Which series? Is one of the series of the various TV or Netflix series or whatever? I have, I have a guess, but I'm not going to give it. I want people to answer first. That's a great question. And if it's what I think it is, that's fascinating. Okay, yeah. let's give the chat some time while yeah. we Google search for it. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, players. Uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us today. And uh, we're going to get some answers to Luke's trivia question for another copy of the Dreadmock Pack. Um, Vlad, did I stay on script? Did I forget or skip anything? No. We, well, we forgot something really important. And we're going to give Mark some time to talk about it. Mark, we're yes. going to launch a Kickstarter really soon. And you're going to see me all dressed like a pirate. Can you tell them why? Because you like dressing up as pirates. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you are correct. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I could wrap this up and tell you all about this fantastic 4X game that we've got by John D. Clare that involves card crafting and adventuring on the high seas and exploring and, and being a swashbuckler and a buccaneer. But it's really just the, 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 really the truth of the reason he's doing it is he just likes dressing up as a pirate. I just like that's dressing right. as a pirate. Yeah, you're totally right. Okay, All right. first answer I got is from David Bauer. No, from Amy Kaiser, and she says Deep Space Nine. That is not true. Not that true. Would have been super okay. hard. I'm probably going to find out this is an urban myth that only I know, and it's not true. But if that's the case, which urban myth am I thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> and Susie Dancer is saying it's Star Trek The Next Generation. That is correct. Okay, is congratulations. Correct. And the reason it was done that way is so the actors and actresses would have a much better sense of their character the first time you saw them That's instead of them having to learn how to act that character while you learned how to watch them. That is so interesting. Yeah. Especially because Encounter at Farpoint, the very first Star Trek Next Generation episode, is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying it didn't work is what you're saying. Well, maybe they maybe they shot that one out of order because oh, it was the pilot. Was, I don't know. That was probably the pilot. So Anthony yeah. Anthony's saying that he has a PhD in Star Trek and he doesn't know the answer to that question. <laughs> he doesn't believe it's true. All right. Well, well we're still we're going go to with... award the prize to Susie because That's that was right. a really nice question. And <laughs> you no, know, you, you get a prize just for Lord. just for thinking the same thing Luke thinks. That's yeah. right. I mean, last time we gave it away for guessing the number John was thinking about. So I don't and feel please that never do that to me again. Never, <laughs> never do that to me again. And I just, I just want to say how awesome it was that that number was thirteen or seventeen, whatever the hardest number is. Like, if you had been paying attention earlier that week, we had this conversation about guessing people's numbers, and John did the right thing and he picked the hard number. Oh, uh, there you go. All right, players. Uh, it's been a great week here at AEG. We've had uh, four days of Tiny Towns and one day of Space Base. We are so glad you were with us. We 
really appreciate the time you spend with us every day. We hope to see you next week when we'll have four more days of Tiny Towns and another day of Space Base with some amazing guests, which we'll talk about next week. Uh, so on behalf of myself and my wife and the Peter Schmitz and Mark Wooten and Vlad, thank you, goodbye, and have a great weekend. Thank Here you, everyone. Have a great day. Woo.